As part of what I declare to be my commitment this year to cover more business topics, especially related to League of Legends, I wanted to discuss in this video something that happened last week that really blew up. Lots of people were talking about it, and yet now no one seems to be talking about it, despite the fact that it is uh, very, very important, has big ramifications, and uh, has not yet been resolved. Uh, and of course, what I am referring to is the Spectate Faker stream takedown last week by Azubu against uh, somebody who was streaming on Twitch. And uh, there's a full article that I published over in GameSpot. You can check it out in the League of Legends section, and uh, you know I'll tweet it along with this video to catch you up on it. But really quickly, basically the synopsis is this. Uh, there was a guy who was using a service called op.gg, which is a website that allows you to spectate pretty much anyone playing in a solo queue game. Uh, this guy was using his own client to spectate Faker uh, using this, you know, Riot's spectate feature as well as the service that allowed him to, to do that. And Azubu actually issued a DMCA takedown notice against his stream claiming that they had ownership of the content. And uh, in response, Twitch took down his stream for 24 hours and removed all the VODs of this stuff. Uh, eventually, the guy reached out to Riot, and Riot provided, uh, their response was very strange. Um, said something along the lines of, like, hey, yeah, and it, <laughs> he was asking, like, is this allowed? Can Azubu take down my stream? Because in his opinion, and, and also from what I understand, Azubu does not own that content at all. They, this guy specifically was not restreaming any Azubu content. Uh, he was specifically streaming his own copy of the game and the own, his own copy of the client that allows uh, him to see what Faker is doing, right? So this is not him restreaming Faker stream, this is him streaming his own stream of Faker, right? In a similar way to the fact that you could walk into, uh, well, you could log into your league client and go into any of the games uh, that your friends are playing right now spectate their games, as long as they're public solo queue games, and uh, see what they're doing, and then and then stream that if you wanted to, right? And you would have every right to do so. So anyway, uh, this guy reaches out to Riot, asks what the deal is, uh, and Riot gives a very vague and confusing response, which is like, you should probably have asked Faker for permission, which completely ignores the entire point of the conversation, which is that Azubu seemed to have issued a DMCA takedown notice on content they did not own. Uh, as far as I understand, this is all based on public information. Uh, Riot actually has a, in the public information available by Riot in a document called Legal Jibber Jabber. You can actually look this up on their website or just do a Google search for Riot Games Legal Jibber Jabber. The document comes up, and in it there's information about basically how people can use uh, the game content, uh, because Riot does own the art assets and uh, the game and, and the music and all that kind of stuff, right? So if Riot wanted to, they could have issued a DMCA takedown notice on this guy. However, they've always made it their policy to let anyone uh, stream any of their content or use any of their video content, especially in cases where that person is not making any money. Uh, and so this guy had every right to stream the game and even monetize it based on this legal jibber-jabber thing. And then, uh, and then, even then, he still wasn't streaming it for money. In fact, in the chat uh, for the stream, he was talking about how uh, people can go watch Faker stream on Azubu whenever his stream was active and that kind of thing. Uh, so, and then just to cover all my bases and to provide context on this, Azubu actually has an agreement with Kespa uh, that any Kespa player, including Faker, uh, Kespa being the Korean Esports Association, any Kespa player, including Faker, uh, streams exclusively on Azubu. So what this agreement is, is an agreement between uh, Azubu and Kespa, not Riot, that enables Faker, anytime he streams, um, enables Azubu to claim ownership of that, right? So like, hey, Faker, you can't stream on Twitch, you can't stream on Hitbox, you can't stream on any of these things. When you stream, uh, you're streaming on Azubu, right? And also, obviously, because it's an Azubu stream, uh, no one can restream that. But again, this is not what that guy was doing. So anyway, setting the base for all this, um, and now that you guys know all of that, uh, I actually reached out in, for the purposes of this article uh, for a statement. Because actually, the funny thing is, is that the Spectate Faker guy posted on Reddit his story, and I saw it right before I went to sleep on, like I, th I think it was Wednesday, 
and I expected in the morning to wake up, and I was like, okay, well, clearly this is a misunderstanding or something weird, or somebody at Azubu has uh, done something that they, uh, just a mistake or something like that. And so I figured it would be resolved, right? Because generally speaking, uh, Riot, Azubu, Twitch, like these guys are pretty good at uh, resolving the situation and commenting in the thread very quickly about all this, right? But when I woke up, it, it wasn't resolved, and there was no comment from any Riot, Azubu, or Twitch employee. Very strange. Uh, so anyway, then I uh, decided to, on Friday, since it didn't seem to get resolved, I think it was Friday, write up this article, and I reached out for comment on Thursday, and none of Azubu, Twitch, or Riot gave me a comment, which is whatever, that's fine. Uh, still to date, they have not provided me with a comment. Now this is also very strange because Matt Gunnan, the director of content at Azubu, claimed that Azubu would be issuing a comment uh, later the day that this thread went up. So again, I think it was Wednesday or something like that. But never ended up issuing the comment. Uh, I did not get a comment back from Azubu uh, per the you know a question that I asked them about you know care to comment or provide a statement or explain any of this. And so to date, none of the parties have talked about this. And no one is, not, nothing is, has happened. Now let me explain to you why this is such a very big deal. Besides the fact that it seems strange that everybody is ignoring, uh, you know, the problem. It's a very big deal because of this. Azubu does not have, as far as all public information is concerned, the right to issue this DMCA takedown notice. And they seem to have done it, presumably under the assumption that because this guy was fake streaming a faker game, they have some sort of ownership or right to that faker game. This doesn't make sense. Uh, underneath this idea, uh, I could stream a... And again, the only way that Azubu would be able to claim this, even though this doesn't make sense either, would be if somehow faker had ownership of all of his gameplay, or had rights to his gameplay, or all of his games, not to my understanding, this has never been really the case in any game situation, uh, and anyone who was watching his game through their own client or otherwise is looking at his content that he has produced. Uh, now obviously there's a huge problem underneath this assumption because there's nine other people in this game, so don't those guys have ownership of their gameplay too? Again, that, that doesn't make any sense, right? And so then again, under this assumption, Faker had this ownership. He, he then uh, signed that ownership over to Kespa, who then signed their ownership over to Azubu, or is, they're renting it or leasing it or licensing it, any number of different things, right? But the idea is that somehow Faker himself had ownership of this gameplay and then escalating it over to Azubu. Azubu somehow had licensing rights to it, media rights, that they were able to then issue this DMCA takedown notice. So, a couple things here. One is, uh, I guess option A would be, Azubu is incorrect, and this is what I believe to be the case. I've, I've spoken to even um, the esports lawyer fellow that has been commenting on Reddit a lot lately and has been on a couple different shows and, and has been discussing the uh, esports law stuff. And, you know, we just had a casual conversation about it. I don't want to put him on the spot, but he seems to agree with me as well, and this is kind of common sense off of anyone who's done any of this online media stuff that um, that Azubu is in the wrong, that they could not have issued the DMCA takedown notice, and that's option A. And that is very strange. Um, it, that no comment has been made and that it seems as though everyone is just going to let them issue this DMCA takedown notice despite the fact that they shouldn't be allowed to. Uh, ramifications for that are that Apparently, streaming services are acknowledging this incorrect assumption that a player owns all, has all rights to all gameplay of his. You know, and and if that's the case, then that has big ramifications for League of Legends, uh, because theoretically, underneath that idea, you know, tournaments uh, that are streaming content that have players' gameplay in it, like. Players would have to sign over rights to their gameplay. Uh, it raises questions around the fact that there's nine other people in the game. Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? So if somehow streaming services are now reckoning, recognizing this to be the case, 
uh, we're into a very strange world, not just in League of Legends again, but in CSGO and Dota 2 and all these other, other games, right? Um, so option A, that's not the case. Or option A, Azubu doesn't have the right to do this and are somehow getting away with it. Big concern. Option B um, is that somehow there is something that isn't public or there's information that isn't public, some sort of thing that uh, has allows that where Riot has given the right to Azubu to issue these takedown notices. Because again, Riot can issue these, right? Riot has every right to be able to issue a takedown notice on anything that includes their game, technically. I, I, this is basically the general assumption because there's art assets and music assets and sound assets and all the stuff that, that Riot owns. And so if Azubu does have the right to do this, uh, there is a very interesting and to my knowledge, not public set of information out there that, again, has dramatic repercussions and also flies in the face of this legal jibber-jabber document that Riot has put out there for people. Uh, and so it's uh, very interesting, if that's the case, and very concerning. Uh, and I think that something like that should probably be known, especially, again, because it flies in the face of this public document that Riot has put out. Option three, again, option one, Azubu doesn't have a right to take this down, or didn't have a right to do this and is getting away with it. Option two is that they have a right because Riot has given it to them. Option uh, three is that somehow Riot, or I'm sorry, Azubu has a right to do this. No one knows about it. Uh, and again, crazy re repercussions for the fact that Azubu somehow has gained the right to do this, not through Riot, but through the fact that in the same way that a performer might have rights to their performance, uh, Azubu uh, has been has obtained rights to Faker's performance of gameplay in League of Legends, which is incredibly unique and would, again, have huge ramifications. I know I keep saying huge ramifications, but that's the whole point, right? Is that this happened, the fact that it hasn't really been addressed at all, no one is talking about it, uh, especially the three main parties involved, Azubu, Twitch, and Riot Games, and that, uh, you know, like, it, if it happened once, it can happen again, and that is crazy. So I actually think that a lot more people should be concerned about this kind of thing. I really hope that we see a statement come out from Azubu or Riot, or Twitch, or all of them together explaining what happened uh, so that this gets resolved. Uh, anyway, setting all that aside, I do want to just make it clear before you know people jump down my throat that I don't necessarily agree with the right for this guy to stream Faker's games all the time because it would be very scary if you know suddenly this guy did it, starts getting away with it, and then you know the next day Azubu opens up Twitter, as opens up the Zubu streams for all of the players that are streaming on Twitch, and you can just ca catch any of their solo queue games at any given point in time, right? Obviously, the Twitch streams would still be more compelling because there'd be a webcam and that kind of thing. But uh, I don't necessarily agree with the idea that players uh, start streaming professional gamers or anybody's games all the time. It's kind of crazy, right? But I do think it's important to recognize that Riot Games then needs to step in and not Azubu to deal with this issue because Azubu does not have, as far as I know, a right to it. Uh, the other thing is that this isn't uh, this video and this conversation isn't out of any kind of malice or, or ill intent towards Azubu, Riot, or Twitch. I think that they all do uh, very good things in the esports industry. I just think that there's something very strange that has happened here and I'm very confused by the fact that no one nearly a week later, actually now, now it is past a week, has addressed it. So. Uh, hopefully this gets resolved, but I hope that we can sort of spark a conversation here and that more people will discuss it. Thanks for watching. You can check out the rest of our coverage of all things esports at OnGamers.com.